Hello everyone, and welcome back to Gloomhaven, and to a new campaign. Last time, I had made some progress with a party of two, but there wasn't quite the interconnectedness and the synergy between all the heroes. So now, we have a party of four. We have Brutus, Faith, Craggy, and Mindy. And between the four of them, I hope to make a little more progress. I've selected their quests and given them slightly changed out cards or equipment and now we're going to take a city event before getting on the road to the Black Barrow. You get word from a contact that there is trouble brewing down in the east walls to des and decide to investigate. Where what you find is a large contingency of the city's Savas workforce, the best builders you'll find anywhere in open rebellion against the construction managers demanding better pay for the specialized work they perform. This city would be a lifeless pile of rocks without us, one of the Savas yells. It's time we see some of its prosperity. The manager on the other side of the argument looks like a captured mouse, not sure at all how to get out of the situation. Talk to Savas appealing to their sense of duty and community. Talk to the managers and attempt to get the Savas better pay. I think they could probably do with some better pay in this world. That seems to be a fairly hot topic around these parts. I, I, I just can't give them more money, the manager pleads. After some persuasion, though, he seems to open up to negotiation. The workers and management meet halfway and everyone seems content. Plus one prosperity. So you can see our Gloomhaven wealth here has gone up by one and our reputation has yet to change. So now we can head over to Black Barrow. And we will get... Oh, we will get a travel encounter along the way. Everyone needs to eat. Whatever your reason for coming to Gloomhaven, out here on the edge of the world, that simple fact is never going to change. A mercenary can't fight on an empty stomach. So when Jexera, a Valrath woman wearing a red cloak and enough gold jewelry to keep you fed for a decade, approaches you in the Sleeping Lion and offers to pay you ten gold coins to track down a thief and retrieve some stolen goods. Well, seems like as good an excuse as any to sober up and start paying off your tab. This thief has taken some important documents, says the red-skinned merchant, her tail whipping about in agitation. I don't care what you do to him. Just bring back what is mine. Based on Jexera's description, it was easy enough to knock around a few alley thugs and get a location of the thieves' hideout. You don't find yourself as a mercenary way out in Gloomhaven without knowing how to crack a few skulls. So your target is the Black Barrow. Sounds like a lovely place. And we'll get our road encounter on the way out. You see fresh wagon tracks in the dirt as you walk along the road. You continue forward and begin to pick out a number of distinct tracks. They must be from a large caravan. Sure enough, as you crest the hill, you see a group of four wagons headed down the road in the same direction. You count perhaps three or four guards among them. Approach the caravan and offer to travel with them until your paths diverge, or attack the caravan. Uh, we don't need to get quite so aggressive as so early. The merchants in the caravan seem grateful, though the guards eye you sceptically. After travelling for half a day without event, you head off down the side road and wave goodbye. The merchants express their appreciation with a bit of coin. Always nice. The hill is easy enough to find. A short journey past the new market gate, and you see it jutting out on the edge of the corpse wood, looking like a rat under a rug. Moving closer, you see the mound is formed from a black earth. Its small, overgrown entrance presents a worn set of stone stairs leading down into the darkness. As you descend, you gratefully notice light emanating from below. Unfortunately, the light is accompanied by the unmistakable stench of death. You contemplate what kind of thieves would make their camp in such a horrid place as you reach the bottom of the steps. Here, you find your answer. A rough group of cutthroats, 
who don't seem to have taken very kindly to your sudden appearance. One in the back matches the description of your quarry. Right, so as ever, before each dungeon, we have to pick an objective for each hero. Cause a trap to be sprung or disarmed. Be the first to kill a monster during the scenario. Probably more likely to get that going. Reveal a room tile by opening a door. Never allow your current hit point value to drop below half your maximum. Um, well, we know there's two doors in this room, but we don't know that we'll necessarily be the ones to open them. Kill a monster during the scenario by causing at least four, or four more points of damage than is necessary. Or loot no gold piles or chests. I don't think he needs to worry about looting. Loot five or more gold piles during the scenario. Your health at the end of the scenario is equal to two or less. Well, Mindy only gets six HP. So that would be more likely to happen, I think. So... We'll take Masochist, and we will head on in. Take care of these unfortunates, your target says, backing out of the room. You can vaguely make out his silhouette as he retreats down a hallway and through a door to his left. Well, it's not every day we get people stupid enough to hand deliver their valuables to us, grins one of the larger bandits, unsheathing a rusty blade. We'll be killing you now. Joke's on them. If you had any valuables, you probably wouldn't be down here in the first place. Right, so as ever, we can start on any of the white highlighted tiles at the beginning of the scenario. And I think what we're going to want to do, perhaps, is kind of focus towards one side so that these guys have further to travel to attack us before they get a turn in. So if we can focus fire on the left side and then kind of move around the left to keep the ones on the right slightly further away, that would be ideal. As for how we're going to kill these guys quickly, who knows, but I think to start with attacking at range so let's see what scoundrel has going on we have throwing knives attacking two at a range of three one two three that will work out anything to do on bottom otherwise we could pull somebody two from a range of three so we could pull this guy to us so that we can attack them on our turf seems to be a good plan so then Brutus is going to be able to attack with a melee attack without issue question is what's Crackheart going to be doing from back here one two three four away attack two at a range of five will be able to hit somebody from here and then on bottom. Did we not have a heal? No, oh, Earth and Clod is the heal, okay. All adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. All allies suffer one damage. Shield two affects all allies. That's very interesting. Maybe next turn if we're swarmed we could use that. Attack two at a range of five. Attack three at a range of three. Right, I don't think we're going to be doing much. On the next six attacks targeting you, gain Retaliate 2. I mean, let's get that going, because otherwise we're not doing anything else. Here. Attack 1 at a range of 2, stun. If 
force one enemy within range four to move. Force one enemy within range five to perform attack two. One, two, three, four. That will work out. So if that's a bottom, what do we want to do on top? I'm going to move three, attack one on top, just to get to this back corner. And then Brutus, we want to make sure we're going after Faith so that they can pull somebody in towards us. And then if we're going to have two opportunities to attack here, we can do so with Spare Dagger on bottom. And provoking Raw on top to disarm. They're going very slowly. Move one, attack four for the elites. Move two, attack three for everybody else. So this guy will be able to move two and hit us. But I think we're going to be all right. Now we can only hit one guy with this. That's a shame. I thought it was two, but that's fine. Well, we wouldn't have hit anything anyway. So you, please come to here. Then Mind Thief. Uh, attack two at a range of zero, so we have to get these guys to attack. We'll have you attack them because they don't have any shield. Oh, I didn't do the... I did the second bit first and the first bit second. Fine. And do I want that back immediately? Maybe I do. Then we're going to move to this corner here. Stay out of stuff's way. Oh, I could have moved to here and attacked. It's all right, we're learning. Right, now we have an opportunity to attack twice, which was our inherent goal in the first place. Minus one deals no damage. This will disarm regardless. Now, Crackheart, we're going to get on the next six melee attacks targeting you, retaliate two going. And we're going to attack to a range of five. And of course, it's a minus. Right, these guys are all going. We're not anticipating being hit by anybody apart from the one we dragged towards us. Oh yeah, and that guy. We know about that guy. But we disarmed him, so they did not get to attack, which is great. Right, if Thor was here, it would be great, because they're all lining up. But we are not Thor. So how are we going to attack these guys most efficiently? Move four, jump and attack. We could attack one, two, three, four, five of them and end up here if we use our boots and then sweeping blow three of them. Although we'd have to go very quickly to pull that off. And it doesn't look like we're going to be very quick. So let's retaliate on top. Warding strength on bottom. While he's up front. Here. Thieves neck we can attack on bottom. And flanking strike we can attack on top. Mind thief. Ranged attack is burn. Attack two, push. Attack with conditions. Heal, add extra. 
Right, we'll summon our gnawing horde on top, so then something to do on bottom. Attack one at a range of two and stun. Very nice. Now here. You'd think there'd be something we can do with those guys in a semicircle. Attack one, range two. Muddle all allies in the area. So we can't get to quite the area we want that to be. If we move to here, we could get that going. Muddle all, tar all allies and enemies in the targeted area. So we need a basic movement. Alright, backup ammunition, although we want to go faster than that really, because we want all of them to be muddled before they manage to get an attack on us. So this is bottom move 2 basic, then Dirt Tornado. They're going pretty speedy here. You're going to attack on bottom. Then attack on top. Don't quite get the kill, unfortunately. Here, we are going to attack one at a range of two and stun. We're not going to get through that guy's shield, so we'll do that over here. And then summon our Plague Rat in the available tile. Now we are going to move two to range two. So that's fine. We'll move to there. Then stick this here. Attacking all of those and causing muddle. I did forget to check what they were doing on their turn and how it would impact us. Right, so here we were going to retaliate and we were going to attempt to ret retaliate quickly, but now all of their attacks are done. So instead, we're going to attack this guy through his shield and kill him. And heal ourselves for two. Oh, it's only going to get rid of the poison. So be it. We've got nothing else to do. We'll take our healing potion now. Right, that's the end of the round. Fresh round is up. If we move two to here, we could attack all three of them with Sweeping Blow. But I'd kind of rather not be put in the situation where so many of them can attack us readily if they don't have movement. Because if they don't move right now, their turns are basically worthless. So here, attack three, range four on top. Move three with poison on bottom. We can poison somebody for somebody else to attack. 
from back here, the mine thief. Don't have any more ranged attacks. Perform one enemy within range four to move one. Tell you what then, let's go to this guy. We've got skewer on 35 on top. So we'll shield and skewer. And we needed a move one. That's a move one on bottom. We don't have anything on top that we're going to want to do right now, are we? So we'll go empathic, empathic, empathetic assault just to go fast. And then we'll force somebody else to move. Then Craghart over here. Attack three, range three. All allies and enemies adjacent to the target suffer one damage. That's going to be great. So. Attack three, range three, push two. But we don't, we don't have to consume the element to do the push. And then Massive Boulder, attack three, range three. No, because those are both tops. Massive Boulder is a top, so we want something on bottom. Don't really have anything good on bottom to be using. A lot of it is burn stuff. On your next four ranged attack actions, add target. That seems really good for a lot of what we've got going on soon. But I'm actually going to crater and push that guy away so he's less likely to hit us next turn. That's top. Something on bottom. Let's try just creating two things just to see what it looks like. Our rat takes a turn, which is wonderful. Right, we are going to have this guy move on to this tile. And attack four, range five, disarm. Infuse ice. I don't want to do this just because I don't want to burn the card. But now here, we can shield oneself. Again, I should have really seen if these guys are like moving and attacking or whatnot, but we're still going to skewer here. The minus one not getting the kill there hurts. But we can still attack and kill them. Do we care which one of these guys dies first? They're doing the same thing, which is move three, attacking for two. So I guess I don't really care. The one with more health. And never allow your current hit points to drop below half of your maximum. Well then, let's move two, and we could step onto the golden loot it, or we could step back and try and avoid being hurt, especially because we are currently poisoned. Take some retaliate damage, which is nice. 
And I think we're going to change our plan here. Oh no, because this is a burn card. Do I want to burn it? Not really. Attack three at a range of three. Create two. We can only do it on the two next to us, so... That was not my intent. I wanted to cancel, not skip, but you know, I'm just bad. Uh, attack three. And push. I'm going to push this guy away. That way, if they don't have a movement, we're not going to be attacked by them next. Right, hopefully the rat will kill this guy, so we don't have to worry about that. So, over here. We have Leaping Cleave, which will attack both of these guys. We'd have to be fast to do it. And any generic movement card. Faith. I think we're just going to move five to the other side of the room. Cragheart. Heal four at a range of two is not bad. It's the top, though. We don't have any bottom attacks, do we? We don't, so we'd rather attack right now. Attack three and immobilize. And then on bottom, move to all adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. Yeah, that sounds good to me. And Ratman. We probably want one of our augments going at some point. Attack two. Do we have a move three? Move four would be fine. All right, we'll go with that. Very nice. Big fan. So we're going to move to here. Skip the rest of the movement. And we're going to push this guy. To there for a specific reason. Oh, we have to go all the way back. We're pushing three. Geez. Three or not at all. Fine, we'll do the three. Now we are going to move two to here. That guy takes one damage. And then we attack them for three. They die. Could have taken the potion there. We take two. They take retaliate damage. And we take two there. They take retaliate damage and die. Now, we can do things basically either way here. But Leaping Cleave gets us XP. So what I'll do is move two up to there. And then attack here. And lastly, we can move on to this gold. And attack with poison. And that is this room clear. So now we need to breach the door. We didn't care who does it because nobody else has the open the door goal. But I think long rests 
are going to be in order here. Because we've all been injured slightly. Or are poisoned or similar. Except this guy. This guy has no damage taken. So we can probably do a nice move across the room. Well, we can move two, at the very least. Right, we're going to move to here. And then loot one. Take all that gold. We created darkness. Then everyone else is long resting. We get back 2 HP. We pick a card that we're never going to play again. Shield Bash, I think. The one attack we get out of it and burn. We'll just burn that card now. End Brute's turn. Cragheart will take the potion. And perform the long rest, which gets us two, back, two more back. Unstable upheaval. Target all adjacent enemies. To target all enemies up to two hexes away. All enemies suffer two damage. Or allies suffer two damage. Healing. Attack three. Immobilize. Attack two at a range of five. Attack three at a range of three. Avalanche. I don't think I'm going to use. Attack four for two is nice. But it's only one attack we get once, and I'm not that enthused about creating single hex obstacles. And then faith. What are we least likely to use? tricky one. I think we can get away with not having Thieves' Neck. There are going to be traps ahead, but we have lots of pushes and movements and stuff. Right, so back in the hot seat. We want somebody the furthest away from the door to open it if we could then they can move back and then we can attack stuff at range after we get through the door. So it's one, two. And then once we're through, three, four. Because the likelihood is something isn't going to be standing directly on the opposite side of the door. So let's go... Spare Dagger. Sweeping Blow. Then once the door is open, we can short rest. Into the night, absolutely fine burning that. Attack three at a range of four. We're probably gonna to wanna to move forward at least two to get a ranged attack in. So we'll do that on single out for now. And we'll get Swift Bow to pair with it. Crag Heart. Earthen Clod attack two, a range of five and cannot immobilize currently. Attack three at a range of three. So attacking at a range of five is going to be great for us.
but I'm actually going to get backup ammunition going. So that's top. What are we doing on bottom then? Healing. Then mine thief. Force one enemy to move. Force one enemy within five to perform an attack action. We'll do that on bottom. Something on top. We'll take scurry so we can move if we need to get something else into range. Right, so we are moving at least up to this door. Then if we step to here... We can still attack with our dagger. Good damage. The archers are moving and attacking. That's a bad time. Right, now scoundrel. Attacking three at a range of four. One, two, three, four. We need to take one step in. Not going to step in any more than we have to. And that's a miss. Force an enemy within range 5 to perform an attack action. We're going to have them attack the one that's not next to the traps. We're more likely to be able to get these guys to trigger the traps over there. Minus one sucks, but we will also move to here. The guards are going. That's rough. Six is pretty grim, but now they can't move past the doorway they don't get to make any more attacks on us. So we're going to add targets to our future attacks and heal. Now, does this count as two targets? Yes. So we'll do it that way. I think that's two of us, isn't it? Heal two. No, we are selecting one person. Okay. Right, then back round to the top as I confirm this text message is not important. It's not. Right. Root. We can skewer. Skewering would be good right about now. And that's top. We could eye for an eye and heal ourselves some more on bottom. Or we could trample and go one, two, three, four, five, six with our boots. But I think a skewer will be fine. So we'll heal and skewer there. Then... Uh, we now have more ability to attack creatures. We get an extra target. So if we have... We don't have Earthen Clod anymore because we just spent that. Attack 3 at range 3. All allies and enemies adjacent to the target suffer 1 damage. We could attack these two, but then Brutus would get hit for 1, which would not be ideal. Attack 3, range 3. Seems good, so that's top. What I'd like to do is create some earth energy hmm. 
But I don't think we're going to be able to with what we've got going. Move two. All adjacent allies and enemies suffer one. Uh, we could probably do it with that. Do it that way around. Mind Thief. Force an enemy within range four to perform move one. Fortunately, we're not going to get those guys into the traps to do that. We don't have Scurry available. Attack two, push three. One, two, three. Would not get them where we need to be. But what we can do is, with boots and feedback loop, one, two, three, four, five, six, we can muddle two of these guys. So then something on top. There's nothing good on top for it, though. All right, in that case, we're going to move in... Attack one at a range of two with stun on bottom. And on top. Get plus two on that going. Right, lastly, we have faith. Throw knives range three. One, two, three will be ideal. And then something on bottom... Move three with some poison, perhaps. Rat takes a step. We are going to stun this guy. And then get an augment going. Or did the augment not go because we never attacked? We'll never know. Right, we're attacking here. I'm going to attack the two that aren't stunned. Minus one's there doing us a whole load of good. And let's step up to here. Poison that guy. Then for us, we're going to heal ourselves for two. And then skewer through these two guys. Good kill at the back there. And Kragheart, we are going to move. All adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. So we're going to move to there. That way there are no adjacent allies. But we create Earth Element. And then we can attack these two guys. Do we want to push them? I don't think so. But we would get experience for doing it. So why not? Right? We're going last. And of course we miss one. You can get pushed here. You can get pushed there. One damage is fine. That's rough. I should take five rather than burning a card, even as counterintuitive as it seems. Now, round eight. I would love to push somebody into these spikes. Or move them with my mind if I could. One enemy within range four. From here, one, two, three, four. It could be done. We would just be fairly vulnerable. these ranged attacks are going to be rough. Right, 
provoking raw attack two and disarm. And move four. We can move one, two, three, f one, two, three, four, and disarm somebody. Here we are going to. I'd like to heal, but right now I don't think we have the option for it. Cragheart. Attack one at a range of two. Plus one extra attack. Muddle all allies and enemies in the target area. If we move forward two, then at range two is one, two. Doesn't really help us. Massive bowl that attack three at a range of three. All allies and enemies adjacent suffer that. We have Earth Element to play with. We would need to move at a range of three. One, two, three. We want to move there, which is one, two, three, four away. Move five, jump, immobilize targets you move through. Move four. Move three. It's not ideal, is it? We could just pull something towards us. Pull two at a range of three. One, two. We could pull them closer and then just do a standard attack. We could actually attack them ourselves. And then here... Attack three, a range of three. Just doesn't quite work out for the way I'd like it to be, I think, which is a shame. So we'll take... What will we do? We'll do that and give ourselves some options, I guess. I don't love it, but... If we go late on parasitic influence, force an enemy within range 4 to form move 1. One, two, three, four. And a standard move to heal self. Move four, move two. No, it would have to be move on top because this is a bottom. But we don't have scurry. I'm bad. I'm really bad. All right, I don't love this, but it's happening. We are moving four. And attacking with the disarm. That's one fewer attacks next turn to worry about. We are pulling you... We can only pull you to here. We can't pull you past us to there. That's fine. Still means we can take our attack action. Please be a plus one. It was not. Alright, Crackheart. We are just going to move to here. No. Move 
move to there. Skip the rest of the movement. Attack here. I regret the position I've left him in. I really do. Yeah, right, this has gone terribly. I really want push two. So we'll get rid of trample. Plague rat titter tattering along. We still have our turn. We're going to move four to here. And then attack here. Right, we want to do a lot of damage as fast as possible. Start with a short rest. Fine. Although that said, now I don't think I can get the push angle that I wanted, can I? Attack three, push two. Can I push to the left? We'll never know. Cragheart. You now have Dirt Tornado. If we want to do a good dirt tornado, we'll need to rock tunnel, but I'm never going to use destroy adjacent obstacle to good effect, I don't think, so we will do that. Mind Thief, perform, force one enemy within range four to perform move one. That's perfect. Scoundrel, we'll just take the two cards we have, and Brutus, I guess we don't need what we were going for. So instead, spare dagger on top, and I'm going to get a warding strength going on bottom. They're going really fast, and I hate it. Oh, but we're going, we're going pretty fast. We're going, we're going pretty, pretty fast. Um. If we move six to here, these traps are doing damage three. So if we attack, oh, if we attack you, you die. That's better. Right, we're gonna force attack four, range five, disarm. We could just kill something. We'd burn through a whole card to do it, but we're going to have to burn cards with probably either Faith or Brutus on all the attacks we're about to take. So, let's get you to please move onto this tile. And then attack four at a range of five. It's a costly card, but if we can not draw a minus one or a miss, it will be a kill. I hate minus numbers. Oh, they're laying traps, not attacking. Well, don't I feel very lucky. Um, in that case, move two. Although, no. Undo. Attack with push here is going to not push because of the damage output. We've got Crankheart coming afterwards. Move five and then a great big attack. If we can move five to here, 
he can just do a standard attack action on top. So we're going to spare Dagger the one further back. We miss. We'll get that going for more survivability. End Brute's turn. Right, so we are... Moving five to here. And then we can either... Oh, we could do... We could do that. And if we burn this, we can do that. All right, that was not terrible. We currently want to cause a trap to be sprung, but I don't think we have pull, do we? So we're probably not gonna be able to get that achieved, which is fine. Um, do -ba -doo, do -ba -doo. If we were stood where Faith was, we could skewer them. We've already lost out on this, that's fine. Loot no gold, have your health be really low. I need to heal. We could long rest, but that seems not awfully efficient. Does anybody else have heals that we can offer up to others? Faith can probably long rest now. Mind Rat probably could as well. We wouldn't get anything back for it, though. We don't have any heals. Crack heart. Heal four at a range of two for rumbling advance. We also just have to kill this thing at the same time. So who's going to do that and how? Faith can't move. And long rest. Oh, uh, okay. Mind Thief's going to short rest. We will lose Fearsome Blade. That's fine. Then my Thief's turn is... Parasitic Influence forces one creature to move. We can make them move into the trap. And we will go on... That's bottom top. We'll get the Scurry for move three and hope they go slower than us. So that's the enemy killed. Faith is going to long rest. Cragheart is going to long rest. And you... Heal two on bottom is as much healing as we would get from a long rest anyway. So we will eye for an eye on bottom and grab and go on top and steal the gold. Please don't let them go faster than a 20. 32 is great. So heal yourself. You need it most. I mean, Faith needs it, but she's going to long rest now. Loot one, take that gold. Plague rat goes, mind thief. We are going to force this creature onto this trap. And then we're going to move... I'm actually going to use the boots to move all the way to here. Then this is a long rest. We need to 
Select an ability card to burn. Attack three and immobilize. I don't think we're likely to use. Earth and clod and things seem... The ranged attacks for us right now seem far greater. So, crushing grasp, you're gone. Long rest for scoundrel. We'll drop backstab, it's a burn card anyway. Right. No one needed to open doors, did they? So, who are we going to have open the door? Is the next question. If Brutus does it now and gets hit a lot, he's not going to have any cards to discard to stop him from dying. So perhaps an awkwardly... Oh, we could long rest with him in the back and let the other three deal with the opening of the door. How far into this room are there skeletons? Is the question. Is this room deeper than this, or is this this how it must be how deep the room is? Um Right, so we're going to want to throw something that's going to attack multiple creatures. And if we're attacking stuff at range, then we're going to want to move into the door and then at least take one step out. But I don't want to step on the gold. So, Mind Thief, what can you do? We can move in first edge, step in, step out again. Or even step onto the gold. And then force an enemy to attack an enemy. We can do that on eight, which means we can then attack two, range five, and burn this to immobilize our enemies. So if that's top, what are we doing on bottom? Probably just a standard move two or something. Then Faith, Swift Bow, range three at four on top for bottom. Could just move. We could try and pull something towards us. Or we could get single out going. Let's get single out going. We might be able to use it between us. So we are stepping in. Kicking through the door. You find yourself face to face with the reason these bandits chose this particular hole to nest in. Animate bones. Unholy abominations of necromantic power. Nothing more to do but lay them to rest, along with the remainder of this troublesome rabble. Then we're stepping back to here. We'll get that gold at the end of our turn. No! Did I screw up again? I did, didn't I? This is on the bottom, so we never should have been able to take a move action. Alright, that's on me. And then 
the skeletons are all going, which is terrible news. Right. So, immobilizing isn't really going to help us much anymore because they've already gotten into range with us. But we can still attack two at a range of five. And we will immobilize them just in case they want to try and move up to us next time. We can pull Crag, uh, Mind Thief out of the way. Zero damage there. Three damage there is much better. Almost better to not hit the one. In the doorway. Uh, sorry, yeah, to not hit the one in the doorway so that they can't move through that space. Uh, we're going to skip our movement. The archers are moving two and attacking for four. That's a bad time. Need to burn feedback loop, unfortunately. Oh boy. Um, scurry. Submissive affliction. Are we going to get attacked again? Alright, well now our health is below where it needs to be to get all the bonuses later. We are putting that on. And then attacking three at a range of four will kill this one. Or we draw minus two and don't do anything. That's fine too. And we are long resting. What are we going to get rid of? Grab and go probably. Right, so we've got lots of bad things all collected in a group. We're probably never going to get to that chest, but if we back up a bit, we can force the archers to not be able to have line of sight onto us. Um, Faith. You still have smoke bomb, which is a pull two. So we could pull this guy onto here, and that would break the trap. And that's a bottom, so on top we can take throwing knives. Scoundrel. No matter what you do, it doesn't look like you're getting a turn in anymore. And so we'll long rest, sure. Cragheart. Now, Dirt Tornado now seems like it would be of great value to us. Massive Boulder. Attack 3, range 3. All allies and enemies adjacent to the target suffer 1 damage. Well, we get to attack 2 targets, and if we can see... So we can see these two tiles, so we can attack both of them. So it's going to be massive boulder on top. All adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. Move four, jump one. All allies suffer one damage. Shield two all allies. I don't think we need that yet. So it's going to be unstable upheaval for nothing and a massive boulder just so we can go fast. Brute. Scurry. 
Spare dagger on top. I for an eye to heal. That's all of us. They're going very slowly, which is always nice. What are they doing? Attack one at a range of four, targeting two. Moving three, target one. Attack one, targeting two. But they can't move through this guy yet. So we are going to pull you onto that. Free kill. Then we're going to attack the two guys that are not blocking the doorway. Strong miss. Let's take the mana potion. We might as well at this point. We'll take back throwing knives to throw them again next turn. Cragheart. We are going to Uh, if we move one, to here, or two even, I keep I keep confusing these two's aesthetic. Uh, if, uh, attack three, one, two, three, no. We don't want to do that. Attack three at a range of three. Would let us hit this guy. If he was stood here... We could attack both of them. That pretty much went to plan. Right, what are we doing? We're going to... Attack you at range. And then heal. Let's heal Faith. She needs it more. Living Bones. We get hit for two. That's fine. They take retaliate damage. We get hit for one. They take retaliate damage. Minus one is great. We basically knew that was going to happen. He will not be taking another turn. Then we just have these four left to deal with. Now we could, as I said, move away from the door frame. And try and not let them get shots on us. So they can attack this tile, but not any of the others. Although, from this tile you can also hit this one. So it's not ideal, really, trying to use the door as a choke point. Dirt Tornado, attack one at a range of two, muddle all targets. Well, we have that to burn as well. So if we move in, all adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. Move four, jump, all adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage, two damage instead. That might actually be a better use of our energy at this stage. Although adjacent means only two, which would be these two, rather than Dirt Tornado would be three abreast. But we're going to play those two cards either way. Faith. We're probably throwing throwing knives. And we'll do it on a flanking strike just for the speed. And here, provoking raw skewer to move six. One, two, three, four, five. We could do it. We could only attack one thing with skewer though. Oh no, we'd be attacking with provoking raw. But 
Crackheart Dirt Tornado would hit him. Now let's go, let's do it. Alright. High risk, high reward, I think. We're going to move over to here. Are we going to stand there? Yes. And then attack two. We'll take the two on the left, I guess. Then we are going to move six to here. And attack with disarm. Now they're all up. That went pretty well. The disarmed one, of course, does not get to attack. Attack three at a range of three. We can push two if we wanted to. Or all adjacent allies suffer one. Move four. Well, we can't. We're not doing that anymore. So the question is, are we moving three? And then attacking at a range. I think we are. So we get to pick two targets. Do we attack the two that are further away or the two that we can feasibly kill? I think we do it. Do we not get? To, do we not have two targets on this? Maybe we've spent too many of those already. new round so Cragheart oh your next yeah so I guess we've burnt through on your next four ranged attacks we've done four ranged attacks now so nothing more to do with that uh, Cragheart's going to need a short rest target all adjacent enemies all adjacent enemies suffer two damage we'll burn that that's fine Right, we need a short rest as well. Right, we're going to play those two cards regardless. We're going to play those two cards regardless. And over here... We could heal someone for four on top. And heal someone for three on bottom. Just try and keep the party going. Or we could try and take a kill. Attack one at a range of two. Attack three at a range of three. All right, we'll do it that way. Actually, that's quite good if they don't move anymore or anything. So we are Let's just go for the one that we can kill because they're going before us moving to attacking three at a range of three 
Of course, it was a minus one. And we will heal ourselves since we're closest to all of them. We expect to take the most hits. Right, that basically went as expected. Move three. Attack with poison. We are immobilized, so we cannot do that. So we heal self while we have the opportunity to do so. And skip our movement. Cragheart. Attack one. All allies adjacent to the enemy take one. So if we hit there. Yep, that's good. And then heal two at a range of two. We're going to give to him. And Crackheart's turn. Round 15. Uh, any kind of rest here is going to get us killed. Maybe we should have taken a long rest, because if we long rested, it happens at the end of the round, and then our tar our body would still be there as a target. But in any case, we're going to short rest, yes. Uh, throwing knives, I do not want to lose. This is fine. Uh, throwing knives, target two, attack of a range of three, we want, and we want to move... One, two, three, four, five. Yes, we'll move over to that chest. We'll take any chance we get to take a chest. And here, attack three at a range of three. One, two, three. We need to move in slightly for that. And we can do it on rumbling advance. So, attack here, attack here. Please don't miss. Standard or move five onto the trap, onto the chest, excuse me. We get a toxic maw. Then Cragheart, we are going to all adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. Move four, jump. All adjacent enemies suffer one damage or two damage instead. So if we do that. We don't hurt anybody that we're next to. We can move to here because we don't want to collect any gold. And we increase our damage. We heal ourselves. We end our turn, that ends the round, and we are victorious. If you take a moment to catch your breath and steel yourself against the visions of living remains ripping at your flesh, your target is not among the dead. And you shudder to think what horrors still await you in the camp. So we did not cause a trap to be sprung, we dropped below our half our health. We did not pick up any gold or chests, and his health was lower than two. So we can exit the dungeon. We return automatically to Gloomhaven. And we will hand in our quest, I believe. No, we don't, because we have further... We need more digging around to do over here, don't we? We found the Toxic Moor quest in the chest. Barrow Lair has been unlocked. It is a linked quest to this one. So now we can either go back to the city or we can move on to Barrow Lair. But that will be a story for next time. If you watched all the way through this hour and a half video, thank you ever so much for watching. If you think these are too long and possibly having four party members is too much or these should maybe be cut into half, do let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.
Cheers.